Hi guys, Glitter here. This is going to be sort of a technical video, so if you aren't interested in anything technical, you should probably leave. I'm going to have a new video up hopefully sometime this week, and I think it's going to be really interesting. But today, I want to sort of show how I go about implementing Fantasy Star Online Bluebird's packets, utilizing information available in the community. So we're actually going to implement one today, and to do that, First, we're going to go to the Boom Proxy repository. And if you were going to implement one, this is what I would recommend. And we have a new document called Dumps, and it contains GIST links that have information on packet dumps or connection dumps. So, I'm working on, or I was working on these packets. I just finished these last two, but we see there's this packet with opcode. A0, and we're going to go ahead and implement that now, but to do that we're going to need some information on it. It's a little laggy. So what I normally do, or have been doing, is I prefer to go to Silver and sort of take a look at the process of what's going in the packet. And in fact, a lot of structs are defined here, as well as as well as some decent names for the opcodes. So let's go ahead and grab this. And we're going to hop into Boomer Proxy. We're going to add this to the login opcode enumeration. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and start implementing the payload. So you see there's various CS projects here that one of them is named Login Server. And we're just going to go ahead and create a new payload in the server folder. We're going to call it Login Ship List Event Payload. Now that we're in here, we can go ahead and create the DTL. And it's going to look similar to whatever struct is on Silverin, but there's some setup stuff we have to do first. We have to tell it this is going to be coming from the server. And we have to give it the opcode. This is all the setup that's required to be capable of deserialization. So now that we've got this empty DTO find here, we go ahead and look at Silverin again and try to find out the structure of the packet. And Silverin is very helpful in this regard. Because, I'm sorry, I, I apologize for the pause. Because they send. Uh, it's not defined in here. Because they often send uh, an actual struct so we can get a closer look at what it looks like. Okay, that's for DC. It's for PC. Are there none for BB? I have a problem. It's definitely sending AO. Let's see if we can find the packet from here. For DC, again DC, PC, menu ID, item ID, some flags, a name.
Okay, so... There does Oh, here! We have the BB ship list, which is essentially the same. I'm not sure why that was so difficult to find. Normally it's very easy to find. You don't have to go through that process, but now that we found this, go ahead and copy this temporarily. Oh boy, we're already listening to Dark Laws music, but this video must have been going on for a little bit longer than I expected. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting packet, so this video might go on for a little bit. So first, we need to create a model. Oops. So we'll call this ship listing. And so this is going to be what actually contains the data, and we're going to have a collection of this actually. Okay, so let's, uh, we're going to need a, some music here. Let's see. Okay, so wind, you two. Well, not that. Here's one of the songs that wasn't used in the original game that I kind of like. It has a really nice ending. So let's go take a look at this. We're going to need menu ID, flags, and name. Okay, so we'll go back to that model. I we'll have a menu ID. Uh, I guess this is to help indicate probably which ship you're clicking on. So when you click on it, it'll send the menu ID back up. I guess, and that'll indicate which ship we wanted, maybe? I'm not sure. Item ID is interesting. I have no idea what that is. I've not looked into... That's a little loud. I've not looked into any of this stuff before making this video. This is completely dry. This is the exact process that goes into goes into implementing these packets for this project. And you're watching it in real time. Here we have uh, some flags. I'll make this public once I know what it is. And we have to add wire member attributes to sort of tell the serializer what order this stuff's coming in as. And it actually does everything automatically after that. This is, again, FreeCraft for serializer. It's something that I wrote for World of Warcraft emulation. And it works quite well in a few projects, actually. This is probably like as a public, or, you know, like maybe what server, what region. That's what I'm guessing, what those flags are. I'll get around to that later. Normally you want to create an enumeration for something or some sort of other... You don't want to leave it as a raw value. Because we have a lot of power with the serializer. We can deserialize to more interesting types than ints and shorts, which are 16-bit integers. Okay, so now we have an interesting one. We have a name. Uh, let's see, I don't... Hex is not a second language for me. Okay, 17. So it's a name that's at maximum 17. So that's a ship name, actually. Oops. That's going to be a string. But the interesting thing that you'll note uh, in that struct above here is that it allocates two bytes per character. So we actually can do support that with the serializer. And it's actually quite easy. 
By the way, none of the serialization has to happen manually. It's done automatically. You actually just create and try to read instances of this object. And you don't have to write or push bytes or bits into a buffer. It's really nice. So this is going to be encoded as UTF-16. And I believe we have everything now. And later this can be refactored because if, if this data right here, the item ID and menu ID, is something that happens often in UI related packets, then there'll be some refactoring and you know we'll clean stuff up. But this is the first dry run. This is the initial structuring of the packet in the project, at least for us. Let's see, uh, for a menu, ship listing for a menu. No, a data model. Okay, so that song's over. Let's go ahead and queue up another one. Mm. Let's listen to the intro theme, the wind version. That sounds nice. So now that we have the ship, oops, now that we have the ship listing model, uh, we'll need to add a, at least a constructor. And we don't need to actually create a constructor that initializes this because we're not writing the server software. Now we can go back here and we'll create a private ship listing array. Now, you could expose this publicly, but it's something I like to do is... is I like to expose an enumerable. I don't want the collection to be modifiable. And then we just return ships. And we could add some documentation links here, or maybe describe the pack a little bit. Hey, it's the ship list for menu rendering. You know, something. I don't really have a strict format for that sort of stuff. The ship menu models. Okay, so now we've got everything. Then we run our unit tests. This happens automatically, it locates all payloads, so you'll see the pass test number increase because this payload's new and it will have been detected. So yeah, we have 250 tests. Great! So this mostly works. I, I, I know of one fault, but I'm not going to get into it uh, because this is an issue I'm going to have to go solve myself. But we need to get the length of this. And the way that they do it is they actually store it this flags and that's kind of bad for me because I had never I hadn't accounted for that to happen so I'm gonna go explore some solutions for that off video but aside from this this is the typical workflow for creating the packets the DTOs um, and let's go actually generate documentation for that so we run this And it shouldn't take too long, and it'll generate some documentation, which I'm sure you guys have seen already. And we're going to need something here. Um, I'm not sure what we should listen to. Maybe there we go. Some episode two music. And so yeah, that's essentially it. Now our documentation is generated, and you can see we've got this crap added. So now we'll go ahead and push a commit.
Right now it's not fully complete. Box contain length. No way for a serializer to deal with that. And shortly it'll be up in the repository. And in fact we'll be able to see some sparse documentation for that as soon as it's done pushing. Ship. Here it is, ship list, and I'll actually link here. Uh, I should probably remove this stuff. It's pretty, pretty basic looking packet actually, because most of it's hidden behind this model. But yeah, that's the process I sort of go through. I'm going to have a new video out soon showing some stuff, I, I think, something interesting. And I just want to thank anyone who stuck around this long. Thanks for watching. This is the process that I've been going through. Same process as solely has been going through as well. Uh, we, sometimes we reference Tethella. Sometimes we, he references his, his own work or his own... Yeah, he's got a, a lot of work in C Sharp as well for Fantasy Star Line. So we have a lot of resources there. And this is sort of the, what we've been doing lately to implement all of these as well as the patching ones, which you guys can go take a look at. This documentation will grow in complexity. It's actually auto-generated. We're going to add more features to the documentation soon that might help people understand things better. But that's all a work in progress. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll update you guys when there's something more interesting.